You know this is our uh, tradition every single Friday. It's presented by our friends at Local Environmental Services. It's a chance for you to blow off a little steam. These are all real emails received from real talkers to talk at ryanjesperson.com who want to use this platform to amplify their message. We call it Trash Talk! All right, this one from Kenneth, who writes in to say, hey, what a great episode there, Real Talk, as a parent with two kids in the Calgary system, uh, grade 12, and now one in a chartered school in kindergarten. Way to go, Kenneth, grade 12 in kindergarten. My man says, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that private and charter schools should not receive the same per-student funding, if any as those in the regular public system. We talked about this with our panelists on Wednesday. He says the lack of resources for the schools where any child shows up and must be accepted, unbelievable. He says any parent that wants their kid in a chartered or private school should pay out of pocket for their kid's education. Any school where they can select which students they're accepting, uh, whether through payment or through lottery systems, should not receive the same funding. When, when my two eldest, twin 17-year-old girls, were in grade 7, their class size was like 25 students. When they left grade 9, their class size was 40. 40, he says. Now, we live in the constituency of Calgary Elbow, and those who can send their kids to private schools, they do. Now, their lives would not be negatively impacted if more funding was channeled to the regular public school system. Even my kindergarten-age daughter, if she didn't get drawn in that chartered school lottery, I would have ponied up and sent her to private school because the class sizes that I've seen with our two older daughters, unbelievable. This is a major problem, says Kenneth, and if we want the best adults entering the working world, the province needs to get serious about investing in public education. Thank you to Real Talk for shining light on this. That from Kenneth. You got it, pal. What about this one from Dallas, who says, I listened to your episode, Ryan, bursting at the seams. Wonderful guest who did a great job of highlighting some of the urban problems in our schools. But, says Dallas, rural is a completely different ball game. I mean true rural, not like Lethbridge or Camrose or Red Deer. Those are urban centers. Says, I'm the parent of two kids, one of them entering college, the second, fourth year of high school. Okay, I've been very involved in local school councils the entire time, even six years as chair. Now, both kids moved away from home after graduating to do a fourth year because our school doesn't have anything to offer them. The local school doesn't even have core options available, right? It's like the second largest school in the division. Uh, beginning this year, they're even busing high school kids to another location just so they can take shop classes. But we have a great facility. We used to have amazing programs when my husband attended there in the 1980s. Now, our first kid wanted to learn more about drama. The principal told him I should just take him to a larger community theater group. That's all he needed. Why should I bother with formal education for him, I was told? Because he's on the autism spectrum. They said it's not real. He's not going to learn by osmosis. Plus, he wants to act as a career if possible. He needs a foundation. I've seen him just blossom after having the privilege of taking drama classes. He's grown so much, so much with just a little bit of formal education. I wonder, says Dallas, how many potential Michael J. Foxes or Jim Carreys or Nathan Fillions or Andrea Martins are in rural areas but will never experience theater or get to see them do their thing without any foundational knowledge at play. Our second kid wants welding and mechanics as a career plus to upgrade. He's excited for school for the first time in years. I've seen this government say they want to support trades but there's no support for it in our public school. There's no support at all. Now, I had a recent conversation with a past trustee who told me the public has no idea how much funding has been cut from public education. Why are we allowing cuts that are so deeply affecting rural schools to the point where we can't even offer a basic, well-rounded education to rural kids? Urban schools get cool programs. Rural schools can't even keep the basics. The entire funding model needs to change. Stop basing it on the number of kids there. It is starving our rural areas. Signing off as the perspective of an involved parent. That's Dallas. And this from, how would you pronounce S-T-E-A-N? Is it Steen? Stein? 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 I apologize. This is from S-T-E-A-N. And your subject line grabbed my full attention. Pissed off teacher. I recently finished, Jespo, listening to your September 6th episode on class sizes and public education. As an elementary teacher, I appreciated everything that both guests brought to the table. I agree wholeheartedly with the vast majority of what they said. But even though I found the conversation sad but optimistic, I left feeling 
pissed off. I had to stop and analyze my own feelings about why I felt that way because I honestly couldn't pinpoint the exact reason. After a beer and a think, had a boy, drink about it, says I seem to figure it out. What bugged me about the show was it felt like nobody is seeing this side personally from a teacher's point of view. He said, no, you did have a teacher on the panel. And Carly sounds like an amazing teacher. And I agreed with the substance of what she had to say. But it smacked of something that teachers hear all the time from the public, from our colleagues. That's like, we're always like selfless and we will do anything for our kids. And it's all worth it for the kids. This, frankly, is the bullshit that the sun is always shining mentality that leads to burnout and mental health problems. And I'm over it says, my fellow teachers go to amazing lengths to help kids succeed, sacrificing their own health and happiness in the process. I've done it to myself, and it, quite frankly, I'll continue to do it, but the challenges over these past few years seem insurmountable. This is a snapshot of my grade three class this year. Now, for reference, I teach in a lower middle income area of North Edmonton, okay? I have 26 kids in my class. 13 of them are below grade level in either math or language arts, half the class. Three of them speak no English. They're recent refugees from Syria. Three of my children, of our, my students, are living with autism. One of them has an aide that can't leave her side, and two of them are living with fetal alcohol syndrome. Just writing it out to you, Ryan, gives me anxiety. On top of that, teachers are people that have regular people problems. Like I, for example, am dealing with a dad who has early onset dementia and will be in care over the next few months. We are all dealing with something outside of school. So when I hear other teachers making us out to be super people who are selfless and care about the kids, it hides the pain that many teachers are hiding. It makes me feel guilty for acknowledging that some of our situations are brutal. We are asked to be the rock for our class when many of us are about to crack. Thank you for listening. That from a pissed off teacher. You can send us your trash talk, praise for teachers, or any other feedback on our shows to talk at ryanjesperson.com. We're back at it on Monday morning live right here from the Real Talk studio. We hope you'll join us and have a great weekend.